When I hear the phrase, winners never quit and quitters never win, I think of two things. The first is shonen anime, and the second is the philosophies of Friedrich Nietzsche. I'm fascinated by the similarities between Japanese cartoons for young boys and the philosophies of a German existentialist. Now, I recognize that they are indeed very different. They come from different cultures and are from different time periods, but there's one thing that I think really solidifies and connects these two contrasting things, and that is the ideal to never give up. In Nietzsche's book, The Will to Power, he says, my humanity is a constant self-overcoming. And in shonen anime, when characters aren't eating, training, or fighting, they are leveling up, constantly overcoming, because what doesn't kill us makes us stronger. Winners never quit, and quitters never win. But while there is so much strength and wisdom to be had in the pursuits of overcoming, can quitting actually help us succeed? In Seth Godin's book, The Dip, he goes over why, when, and how to quit. So in today's video, I'm gonna be going over my biggest takeaways from Seth Godin's little book. Now there are two main reasons why we should quit. And they kind of go without saying, but not everything is worth doing, especially to keep doing. One of the most memorable examples from the book is wetting the bed. It's not good for us to continue doing this thing. Eventually, we should quit. A personal example is quitting a book that I'm not interested in. I think that this is part of the reason why I've been able to read over 200 books over the last two years, because I quit books that aren't interesting to me. I don't have to continue reading something that isn't entertaining or stimulating my brain. I don't have to worry about that. I'm only doing the things that I want to do, which leads to the second main reason why we should quit. Not only are there things that we shouldn't do, but there are things that we should be doing instead. In the beginning of the book, Seth Godin refers to Ziff's law, which is an empirical law formulated using mathematical statistics that ultimately concludes that winners win big, much bigger than others. For example, the number one most sold ice cream flavor, according to the International Ice Cream Association, is vanilla. And it's not by a short margin. So while one of the main points of the book is to quit things, the underlying thesis is that we should quit so that we can eventually become number one. It was his hat, Mr. Krabs. He was number one. According to Seth Godin, it's better to be number one in maybe a smaller market than to be number four or five in a bigger market. Now, whether or not you agree with this assessment, I'm personally not sure what to make of it myself. There are so many reasons why we should quit, and I found a lot of help from reading the book, The Dip. So now that we have a better understanding of why we quit, the question we need to ask ourselves is, Seth Godin presents three different circumstances where we will have the opportunity to quit. The first is a cliff. It's a dangerous experience that will lead to failure, so we should quit. The second is a cul-de-sac, which are typically safe. They won't lead to any improvement though. No matter how hard you work or what circumstances come your way, they are a dead end, so we should quit. The third opportunity are dips. Dips are when things are starting to get rough when most people feel like quitting. He describes it as the long slog between starting and mastery. The dip is the difference between the easy beginner technique and the more useful expert approach in skiing or fashion design. The dip is the long stretch between beginner's luck and real accomplishment. The dip is the set of artificial screens set up to keep people like you out. And this is where we shouldn't quit. Don't quit in the dip. But Seth Godin says that if you can't make it through the dip, don't start. So the three areas, the three time periods when we are supposed to quit is if we are on a cliff and we're going to hurt ourselves, or if we are at a dead end and we're never going to find improvement, or before the dip starts. 
So now that we know when to quit, the next logical question that we should ask is how now remember, the reason that you are quitting is because you want to do something else. According to Seth Godin, strategic quitting is a conscious decision you make based on the choices that are available to you. If you realize you're at a dead end compared with what you could be investing in, quitting is not only a reasonable choice, it's a smart one. Seth Godin encourages people to ask three questions before they quit. The first is, am I panicking? The second is, who am I trying to influence? And the third is, what measurable progress am I making? Quitting is not easy, and arguably effective quitting can be even more difficult than pressing through a dip. But its difficulty does not negate its importance and value. So when you're going to quit, write down the circumstances that would lead you to quit, and then stick with it unless that happens. This is what ultramarathon runner Dick Collins does. Before the race begins, he writes down the circumstances that he would allow himself to quit. He says, if you are making a decision, based on how you feel in that moment, you will probably make the wrong one. Now there's a lot of wisdom to be had in shonen anime and Friedrich Nietzsche, and I don't think that their lessons on hard work and overcoming and constantly getting better are dialectically opposed to quitting, but rather I think that they are complemented by the lessons from Seth Godin's The Dip. Work for work's sake is empty and foolish, but work for the sake of growth and success and wisdom, well that's worth doing. Doing. So I definitely recommend you pick up a copy of The Dip for yourself. I'll have a link in the description so that you can grab a copy. And if you are interested in more book analyses, you definitely should subscribe to this channel. And if you like this video, feel free to hit that like button. But in the meantime, I love you, peace, God bless, and I will catch you all in the next one.